So last year I picked up these two witches and uh, they're not hugely good quality in there but they're meant to be hung up from their heads but I didn't want to hang them from their heads so I put them on basic posts and stood them up um, and their eyes light up and they talk I didn't want them both talking at once because that's kind of noisy uh, so I built a basic you know sequence up turn one on then the other one on um, and they're powered by uh, cables rather than batteries so what I did this year I found another lady and she's a little bit bigger and uh, she talks and she um, her eyes light up but also she moves as well so she's a little bit better better quality um, she's battery powered so what we're going to do we're going to make her um, powered from a cable instead so that you don't have to worry about batteries and then I'm going to show you with a prop controller how you can basically wire all three up such that they come on in turn one thing to note with these switches is uh, you can turn them on literally as you apply the power. So here's the wire, it's going to my bench supply, four and a half volts on there. And if I plug her in, basically she starts up straight away. And one thing I notice is one of her eyeballs has fallen off and is inside here. So we look at the back of them. Um, this switch has three batteries, each 1.5 volts, so add three together. She's, she's designed for four and a half volts. So all I've got here is basically a, a, a cable coming out of the battery box. Um, and then I've got an extension cable on it so I can actually you know wire it out further. Um, this other witch, she's a bit of an awkward one. She's only two batteries, so she's really three volts. Um, and I've actually, I think, put a power unit in line with her so I can give her five. But uh, and the new witch, well, she's got three batteries, so she's four and a half as well. So this one is the one I'm now going to show you how to wire out. I'm going to take out this screw to take off the battery compartment lid. I'm going to show you where the terminals are, and then we're going to solder on some wires, um, and she will become a powered prop. So we're going to look at how to wire this. I've got three simple batteries um, just to show you going in. One two and three of course standard AAs what you're looking for for wiring you're looking for the isolated terminals so they're all in series this last terminal here is all on its own and is a positive a plus end so we know that that's where we're going to put our plus connection onto this terminal here if that's the positive it wires through reconnects like that to this guy and he's the negative now if we just pull these apart if you don't want to solder you could probably just bend up this contact put enough wire under it put some glue on there and it should hold um, I'm never going to power this thing from a from batteries so I'm actually going to solder the wires on I'm going to put a little bit of solder on each of these terminals one here and one up on this spring uh, and then I'm going to solder the wire on permanently and then I'm just going to kind of dangle it out of the um, the door just so it's got a little bit of strain relief um, and then we can try her out on a bench supply and that will give us an idea of how much current she needs um, to actually run so I've got to say if you're doing any soldering or anything like this one of these like, magnifying lamps on an arm is really really useful um, you know, here, here you can see what I've done more easily so the red one soldered down the bottom the black one up the top uh, much much easier to do with a magnifier so we go wires in place as uh, switch is set to on make sure you've got things set to on and here we have our little tail we can put four and a half volts onto quick and easy as that no more batteries the beauty of this is all three of these I can synchronize so that they talk at once um, which will look good Okay, so she's wired up, and just like the other one, she starts straight away. And she talks, and she sways around. And Notice she takes a lot more current than the other ones because of the mechanism to move her by the motor. And so this one's taking, you know, up to 200 milliamps. The others are more like 50 or 60 milliamps. So it's okay. We just need to know how much current we're going to use because of doing the power of the thing and that's what we'll move on to with a prop controller now 
Okay, so all three ladies are wired up. Um, and just for testing, I basically I've soldered all the grounds together on the three. Um, I put the power supply to 4.9, they'll take 5 volts on these things, no problem. And then I can simply, you know, set them off one by one. Um, and then what I want to do is make sure I time them. So when they go off on my timer, I know need to know how long to wait for them to finish their uh, chortling. That one just, she just thinks things are fun. So last year, I cobbled this together quite quickly and literally just had a random old controller board, which I soldered wires to. This is an Arduino Nano. And then a, a little power unit. And then I actually used relays to switch the power outputs. You can see the, the little jumper wires at the back there. Um, and it was all fired from a small PIR sensor. It had a... One of my mini lights to kind of light up the uh, the ladies when they were talking and another one there for an extension um this year gonna make it with one of my prop controller boards arduino nano we're going to use three mosfets rather than use the relays we don't need those and we're going to use the five volts from the arduino so we're going to power the thing on 12 volts the arduino has a five volt regulator on board um, to power itself it can also power other things. We've got a maximum of about 300 milliamps of stuff to To drive with the witches in fact probably more like 200 because they're never all on at the same time um, Which I think is enough. So then all we need really is a couple of capacitors It's just to make sure we've got some uh, charge reservoir um, And then we're good to go. So I'm going to start putting the pieces together on this board and then I'll write the code and show you how easy it is just to write a really simple sequence okay so here's a completed uh, board very little on it a um, couple of jumper wires on the back so that this one that goes over here if we're pulling 12 volts in it's going to go to the Arduino here this will produce 5 volts which it produces there's a little resistor jumper fitted which comes out on here and then powers the three um, feeds to the MOSFETs from the MOSFETs so each one of these will have five volts at one end of this jumper and then a switched ground effectively on on the other one so each one of these as I turn the MOSFETs on will basically allow current to flow through each of the different witches um, and you can sequence them in turn um, I'm going to control it with a small PIR this is um, one of these guys and um, that's pretty ugly so what I'm going to do actually is this cheap Dollar Tree skull. I'm going to drill a hole in its eye and then I'm going to glue the PIR coming through. So the skull can sit there at the base of the witches next to the fire um, and look a little bit less conspicuous. Okay, so here's the uh, completed design. Uh, strain relieved this cable. I'm going to put it in a box. Here's the skull with his, with his uh, eye. I think it blind, blends in reasonably well. Um, but what I found with the code, the code's running on it, but the little five volt regulator on here that's now having to power everything on here and this guy and each one of these loads. When the long talking witch, 18 second witch is on, it gets pretty hot and then it can do funky stuff. It can actually reset. So rather than mess about with that, I'm going to put a separate regulator on. There's already a spot on the board down here. This will give me a nice clean 5 volts at up to 3 amps, which is way, way more than I ever need. And it uh, will mean the program runs properly. So I'm going to add that now. Okay, so with the extra power supply board and giving a nice strong 5 volts, it's triggering and working as expected. Um, so all I need to do now is just put it in a box. So here we've got it in the, uh, in the little box. Just going to put the lid on. And just got to uh, basically put some sealant on there just to glue the lid on. It's a simple box. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, it's just for testing. Just put this in the garage quickly. There's a little control box in the skull sensor. And uh, just waiting for them to wake up when they've done their last timeout.
and then they're back to sleep. So for the sequencer, anybody who thinks they can't do this sort of coding, honestly, take a look at this. It doesn't get any easier than this. So here's the code here. Um, first thing I've got, this is just comments. Anything that's that gray color, it's just comments. You could write anything you want in there. It doesn't matter. I just have a little picture of the, the actual chip. And then I just put on the side of it what's going to go on those pins of that chip. So getting on to the code. First thing you've got right at the very start, these are just constants. We're setting up the pin numbers. That's all we're doing. Which one, which two, which three, and the PIR trigger. You can see they match the pin numbers there. Now, in the programs, the first thing that will run is a setup function. Always called this void setup. All I'm doing now is saying that these three are going to be outputs. This pin's going to be an input. And then before we start doing anything, I'm going to turn all those witches off just to make sure that they're all properly off before we start. We then go into the main loop function. And as it sounds, loop means it goes on and on and on and on and goes on forever, basically. And here's the code. It's looking for the PIR trigger to register a high level. So normally it's low. When you trigger it, the voltage jumps up, says it's high. When it triggers, if so if it doesn't trigger, it's just going to go around there, wait 20 seconds. Okay, and then it's going to trigger. Once it's triggered, really simple. We're turning the first switch on high. We're waiting 11 seconds. That lets her do all her talking. Then we turn her off again. So we're switching her level high. That turns the MOSFET on. Then we switch it low. And we're going to wait one second between conversations. Then we're going to turn the next switch on. She's the talkative one, 18 seconds, turn her off, wait, and then finally the last of the three witches, we turn her on, 11 seconds of talking, then turn her off. And then when it drops out of this loop, this if statement, sorry, it's gonna delay 20 seconds, go back and see if it gets triggered again. So this is simply putting each of these witches on in turn. You could do it differently. You could have a random number generated each time around the loop and just choose one of the witches. Or you could have more gabbling away at the same time or, well, any combination of. And you can change the timings, um, change this delay so that they don't come on as frequently, or maybe turn it off so that they're talking more frequently. It, honestly, it doesn't get any simpler than this for code. Um, doesn't use any libraries anything you just literally compile this download it to your chip and you're done